Chelsea. Or Chelsea. And Martin just said, look, I know there are a few problems. He said, and we'll help wherever we can. He said, you know, Robbo and I, Robbo and I have, have, have been around the block a few times as well, and we, we know what we're talking about. And Robbo was there just sort of listening and sort of smiling and, and as, he, as he did. And I love him. One of my favourite people, him and Trevor Francis actually. Um, two of the nicest people you could ever meet. So I signed for the club and they said, um, you obviously won't play this weekend, you're going to go, uh, but we're going to La Manga for a, for a team bonding trip. I was like, brilliant, just come, you know, I've had a tough time the last six or seven months at Aston Villa and I'm going on a trip to La Manga with all the boys. I already knew Emil Heskey quite well, so we get to a position whereby we get on a plane, we fly to La Manga, with Robbo lead, leading the party, no Martin, Martin was back in, in England, he was coming out the next day. We arrive and I'm rooming with Emil Heskey. Most of the lads want to go and play golf. I'm not a golfer uh, at all. So Emil and I are in the room and Ian Marshall, remember him? Less than 30 seconds forward. Ipswich, big fucking mop head, scouser. He said, um, he said, all the lads are meeting at eight o'clock in the bar. Brilliant, everybody rang around. So we get into the bar at eight o'clock. It's a room about this size in the corner. There's a lovely piano. There's a couple sat in the corner. And all of the Leicester City lads are sat around three or four tables. And it's a proper, the, the, the one thing I loved about that particular team is that, is that there were a lot of um, really strong characters. Um, it's scruffy as well. Matt, Matt Elliott, Jerry Taggart, um, Tim Flowers, Muzzy, it was a good team, to be fair. And everybody looked after each other on the pitch, they were quite good back. Neil Lennon. So we're all sat there, and the physio is called Mick Yeomans, and Mick has no hair. So as an initiation, Neil Lennon turned around and went, see that fire extinguisher behind you? Give Mick a little bit on his on his face. You know, get, get everybody laughing and say hello to the boys. So I just give him a little squirt, and it's this powder on his face that was like a him with laughter, and that was it. Very childish. So then Lenny went, no, 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 no. He said, you've got to do it properly. He said, give it him. So I've pressed it down, not realising that when you press a powder for it, it should down and stays on. So it fills the room <laughs> with powder. And Matty Elliott took dancing because the piano guy's playing. And this little fella that was only about five foot five, bless him, comes out of the powder, jumps on Matty Elliott's back. First big mistake, he's a fucking six foot four giant. Matty and him are fighting on the floor. Other bloke comes over and the piano's still going. It was like, it was genuinely, it was like something that could, And we're all laughing. We all left the room, went to bed, half, half cut all of us. Next day, knock on the door, it's Robbo, John Robertson. And again, I just regressed to being a nine-year-old kid watching Star Slocker, he's like, big man. So we've got a bit of trouble. I said, what? He said, um, somebody fucking set a fire extinguisher, one of the lads off in the, in the, the room last night, and the guy that ran out and jumped on, jumped on Matty Elliott's back has been coming here with his wife every year for the same week for 30 years. And he complained, and we've been kicked out. We haven't even been there 24 hours at this point. <laughs> and he said, fuck knows who, who did it. He said, and I'm fucking sitting there sweating. And he's gone, we've, we've meet up in half an hour at, at, the, at the reception. Robbo's ashen faced. I mean, he's ashen faced anyway, but he's double <laughs> ashen faced. And so we meet, we fly back. Tabloids have been report, uh, alerted. Leicester City, plus Colin Moore, who's only just signed. Uh, come back to Gatwick in shame. We couldn't, the, the, the plane landed on the tarmac. We couldn't go through the, 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 the general sort of, the, you know, the departure, the arrivals uh, lounge. We stayed on the tarmac, coach came and picked us up, and we drive out, first mistake of the day, all the curtains are closed. Muzzy as it decides to stick his finger behind the curtains and do that to the press. That was the next day's sunny front page. <laughs> Leicester City yobs, trash, La Manga. And the phone rings on the bus, and it's the gaffer, Martin O'Neill, who's, as you know, um, can be prickly at the best of times. And he said, I have no idea what's happened. I was getting ready to fly out, and this has happened. I'm absolutely disgusted. You're going to meet me in two hours' time at Sketchley Gra uh, Grange Hotel, just off the M6, M69, and I'm really not happy. 
So at this point, I'm like, I've only been here for fucking 24 hours. And this was after a long list of shenanigans and Villa and what have you. And I'm like, I saw everything come in front of my eyes. So we, we get to Sketchley Grange and it's all set out chairs. Martin O'Neill at a lectern. And the night before, when everybody was pissed, um, Matty Elliott had decided, got Robbo's phone off him, dialed Martin O'Neill's number and went, hey Gaffer, all the lads are here, having a great time, see you tomorrow. And the first thing Martin said was, who called me at two o'clock in the morning? And Matty went, me Gaffer. He said, you've not done enough in this game to ever fucking call me, never mind at two o'clock in the morning when I'm in bed with my wife. And I'm like, I've got corn flake in my throat that's getting bigger because I know what the next question's coming. Who set the fire extinguisher off in the lounge? Me, Gaffer. And he shook his head, he went, I fucking knew it. I knew I shouldn't have signed you. So I'm like, he's like, in my office tomorrow morning, nine o'clock. And I was like, that was it, my career was over. I was like, I'm gonna get the sack. Walk into his office and he's got every newspaper on his desk, and I can see it now, and a yellow and an orange marker, and it's like Colin Moore came out of the mist, Colin Moore fucking set the fire extinguisher off, some little blow jumped on Matty Elliott's back. And he went, the first thing you're gonna do, he said, have you got a girlfriend? I said, yeah, I have. He said, you're gonna buy some flowers, and you're gonna to apologize to her. And he said, as far as I'm concerned, this is a yellow card offense. He said, you know what that means, don't you? I said, yes, Gaffer. I'm like, Christ, he's let me off. Next day, Leicester City were playing Sunderland, Super Sunday, Premier League, um, Sunderland team were riding high, Niall Phillips, Kevin, striker, Kevin, Phillips. really good, Niall Quinn, Kevin Phillips, Peter Reid, Peter Reid's got a fucking monkey's head, um, he was the manager, so Super Sunday, my home debut, and I arrive at the ground and Leicester fans are looking at me like, do we really want him? Do we really want the trouble? I'm gonna get off the bus and there's a few boots and what have you. Fast forward 90 minutes, I've scored a hat trick and people are singing my name at Filbert Street. And, um, I know. As, it is disgraceful. But I've scored a hat trick against a really good 1 5 2. And if you ask Leicester fans, what, other than the miracle season in the last 25 years, what will their favourite moments be? And I say, Leicester, that Super Sunday, Leicester 5, uh, um, Sunderland 2. So I get the ball, referee, and I'm buzzing and they're singing my name. And I'm walking off and I see Martin steaming towards me. Angry, agitated, you know how agitated he gets. And he's like 10 yards away, five yards away, two yards away, and I've got the match ball. I stood like that and he went, you lucky country. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen him do very, very good friends. But that's how to manage somebody. Basically, he saw the situation, he saw that I needed to pull my finger out, he gave me the arm around me, and I have to say about John Robinson is that my greatest memories of that guy of coming out to training halfway through, putting an arm around you, telling you how good you were. And then when I was doing talks book for eight years and going around doing phonings at grounds, I was at Villa Park. And you know where the tunnel is at Villa Park in the corner of the North Stand? And I'm doing, I'm welcome to call Colin Moore and we're live from Villa Park and Villa have beaten whoever 2 0. And I see this plume of smoke coming out and they brought the, the, the tunnel canopy out. And I saw this plume of smoke. And we had an ad break and I went down, it was just Robbo there having a fag, just, just listening. A uh, great man, I know he's been a bit poorly recently, but uh, but yeah, that's my Leicester City Lamanga story that involves two absolute forest legends. Thanks very much.